So it is now December, and what better way to get in the holiday spirit than playing a game about holiday spirits? I know Scooby-Doo isn't exactly the first thing that comes to mind when you think about Christmassy stuff, but it has a great deal of holiday content. Scooby-Doo had its share of games on the Cartoon Network website, and this is one that's worth checking out. Or rather, three that are worth checking out. Haunts for the Holidays was released in three separate chapters, each containing two minigames with the same ongoing story. So let's dive into this holly jolly spooky good time. The first chapter is called Theater Terror. I imagine that's the feeling you get when you have a one minute costume change before you go back on stage, speaking from experience. You might be surprised to see that this is fully animated with voice acting. As Shaggy would say, groovy. To set the scene for this tale of terror, Shaggy and Scooby are in London for the holiday season. They're in the UK during winter? This game is already scary. They've come to see A Christmas Carol, and believe me, absolutely nothing can prepare you for what happens next. Wow! Check it out, Scoob! That's the Queen of England! The Queen of England is a Scooby-Doo character. She isn't just a background character either, she actively interacts with you throughout the story. She's come to see the play and she's wearing the crown jewels, so they're absolutely going to get stolen. The cutscenes are amazing and the dialogue perfectly captures the feel of Scooby-Doo. It's like your own interactive episode, featuring the Queen. <laughs> there are ghosts in this play? It's called A Christmas Carol! I just thought it'd be a lot of singing! I don't know how he managed to go his whole life without knowing the plot of A Christmas Carol, especially since he seemed so excited to see this play in particular. Like, wake me up when it's all over, eh, Scoob? Like, when I'm wiser and I'm older, Scoob! So the ghost of Christmas present turns out to be real and, you guessed it, steals the crown jewels. Scooby and Shaggy are recognized as members of Mystery Inc., so this guy asks them to help find the jewels. They're convinced by none other than the Queen herself, who tells them they will receive a royal feast as their reward. This is the most expressional I've ever seen, Queen Elizabeth. Come on, Scoob! Let's go look for clues! Hey, what did she just say there? When Shaggy and Scooby go to investigate the crime scene, they're chased by the ghost of Christmas present into our first section of the game. Must eat to survive. Uh, yeah, that's scientifically accurate, yes. We're then met with two very complicated pages of instructions. I tried to remember every detail, but it just wasn't happening. Thankfully, the game is easier to understand when you're in it, but playing it isn't quite as easy. You're on this tiled floor filled with sandwiches and pizzas you have to eat through. You have a meter that fills whenever you eat, making you heavier. If you step on a cracked tile and you're too heavy, you fall through and have to start over. Some of the food shakes, which means there are cockroaches inside it. If you eat these, you won't be able to eat for a portion of time. On top of that, you're being timed and you can't just eat your way to the exit. You have to find a key, then you have to reach the door at the other end. This is a lot harder than it sounds. When you're full, you can find soft drinks to empty your hunger meter. Yeah, that's real healthy. You have to move across the tiles in a precise order to clear the right path to both the key and the door. You have to leave space so you can reach a soft drink so you won't be too heavy when you cross collapsible tiles. At the start of each room, all the tiles flicker and show you where everything is, but only for two seconds. If you don't see where the key or the soft drinks are, you're out of luck. You only get five tries and it's easy to use up all of them. This is actually really hard. It's an intense strategy game that requires quick but also methodical thinking. Honestly, it wouldn't be so hard if it didn't send you back to the very beginning whenever you lost. You don't have enough time to think or try out different strategies because you only have five attempts. It's only the first minigame and it's already brutal. There are five stages, but with how much time you spend on some of them, I think that's a little too long. Just when you think you've finally beaten it, there's another room. Then you eventually die and you can't remember what you did to get that far when you have to do it all over again. Also, you can find these locks that lock the door you came in through. If it makes a difference, it isn't noticeable. While this isn't the hardest minigame we'll be faced with, it's still one of the harder ones, and it's the very first one. Maybe the first stage should have been a little easier. You don't want to scare off your players. Or maybe you do. This is Scooby-Doo, after all. You need to face your fears to move forward. The last stage is interesting because you have an almost endless barrage of cockroaches to eat through. You have to choose your path carefully to avoid running out of time. Also, cockroaches seem like a weird obstacle for this particular effect. Why not spoiled food or something like that? According to the instructions, Shaggy and Scooby are so disgusted by them that they can't eat. They look like they're about to throw up whenever they see them, so maybe spoiled food was the original intention. So when you finally clear that section, you meet this caretaker who totally isn't suspicious at all. He's also so stereotypically British that it's almost comical. Well, my name's Pete Crudgeon. I'm the caretaker of this theater, and I don't need strays hanging about causing trouble. Look, if you don't mind, I've got a job to do. Then I'm going to eat some beans. 
He's also an inventor, so yeah, it's really obvious that he's the one behind this. The mystery aspect wasn't a high priority. So the Ghost of Christmas Present is on top of the highest catwalk in existence and is dropping things down on Shaggy and Scooby. For the next minigame, you have to try and reach him. Unfortunately, this part was extremely buggy and I had to search for the game on a different website. Might just be the result of aging software. But for this, you avoid falling objects while switching off between Shaggy and Scooby. The instructions lie to you because they tell you the control key switches your character, but it's actually shift. The instructions also fail to tell you that Scooby can't climb ladders, only Shaggy can. This might actually be a problem in some stages where you can only bring one of them to a platform with a ladder. The instructions also fail to mention sandbags, which can only move a platform once, so you better not mess those up. You've heard of the unreliable narrator trope, but how about the unreliable instructions? Aside from that, it isn't too hard. You flip switches to raise certain platforms and try to get both of them to the top. There are seven stages, and they all require a bit of strategizing, so like with the sandwich one, it does feel a tad too long. Thankfully, if you corner yourself, you can reset the stage without any consequences. This is good, because some of the stages are a little hard to figure out. It isn't too bad, though. With enough effort, you can make it to the end and win. Then you meet suspect number two, the director. He's up here because he wants to convince the ghost to star in his next play. No idea how he got up there so easily after all we had to go through. He's so over the top that he's obviously not the bad guy. Next. Then the Ghost of Christmas Present shows up and shakes the railing, which causes Shaggy and Scooby to fall off. This concludes the first part of the game. So we can expect that each of these will center around one of the ghosts from A Christmas Carol. The past, the present, and yet to come. So let's move on to the second one, Ghost in the Cellar. Shaggy and Scooby land in... a cellar. Then the Ghost of Christmas Past shows up. You check that way! <laughs> okay, that's actually kind of creepy. You run into a room filled with costumes and get your next minigame. You have to click around to find items that match the costume in the corner. This acts as your disguise so past doesn't see you. You just have to be a fast clicker and it isn't too hard. Afterward, Shaggy and Scooby find that one of the actresses is still in her dressing room despite the whole ghost invasion thing. Her room is filled with food because she gets gifts from admirers. There's more to life than clothes and jewels and food. I was with you up until the last one. Totally with Shaggy on that one. Then the ghost shows up again. So Shaggy and Scooby run into a studio where they have to open a door by repeating a pattern they see on security footage. You watch a bunch of items move, then you click them in order. As time goes on, the static becomes harder to see through, adding more of a challenge. Normally, I'm not too good with these types of games, but we have technology. You can just record a video with your phone and look back on it to see the pattern again. Again, it goes on for a bit too long, but once you're done, you head into this creepy cavern where you meet the Grim Reaper. And that brings us to the third and final chapter in this trilogy, The Last Act. Ghost in the Cellar was surprisingly easy, but get ready because this is the most unforgiving one yet. First of all, the instructions call him the Ghost of Christmas Future. I guess the Ghost of Christmas Yet to Come wasn't as recognizable of a title. Then we are treated to what might be one of the hardest minigames I have ever played. You're being chased by the ghost in a gondola you're rowing down a stream. If you move too slow, he catches up to you. If you move too fast, you risk hitting a rock. If you hit a rock, you spring a leak and have to mash the spacebar to bail water out. At a glance, it doesn't look too hard. A typical obstacle dodger with a scrolling screen. But trust me, you have no idea. One or two hits from a rock is all it takes to slow you down enough for the ghost to catch you. The AI seems to know which direction you're going in and deliberately puts rocks in your path. Your gondola is massive and has a tremendous hitbox, so it's hard to move it out of the way in the short time you have when a rock first appears on the screen. If you're going even a little too fast, you won't have any time and you just have to take the hit. I should also mention that we've played a great deal of button mashers on this channel. I like to think I'm fairly good at them, but this one is really strange. It seems that even if I smash the space bar at the speed of light, it doesn't make any difference. You have to wait for a drain to show up because they fully repair your boat. Other power-ups include motors that make you faster and anchors that slow you down. You might think to avoid the anchors, but they can actually be useful. If you go too fast, you won't be able to dodge the rocks, but if you go too slow and something like a rock or anchor causes you to go even slower, slower, the ghost will catch up to you. The key is to maintain a perfect balance of speed and steadiness. Again, the stage is way too long, so it's hard to keep it up for the entire duration of it. It's kind of satisfying when you beat it, but then you realize the next stage is probably going to be much harder. Why would they Scooby do this? I think we can confidently add this stage to our wall of infamy along with the Black Knight fight from Scooby-Doo 2. 
So now let's get on with the final stage in this adventure. You find a room filled with security monitors, so we then get a minigame where we play a sort of Scooby-Doo version of Five Nights at Freddy's. Just kidding, it's something else entirely. Shaggy and Scooby are in this dark series of tunnels with a flashlight. You can only see what's lit up in front of you apart from the eyes that fly around the screen. They can either belong to harmless bats or the ghost of Christmas future, who will cause you to lose energy. You have to flip switches to turn off lasers so you can clear paths for yourself. The lasers and trap doors also drain your energy. Right away, you're met with a unique challenge where you have to wait for the ghost to move just slightly out of the way so you can reach a switch. You should probably lose some battery life before this, otherwise your beam will be too long and it'll be harder to keep him out of it. This isn't the most complicated minigame in existence, but it does require a bit of strategizing and it can take a long time to figure out. The downside of it taking too long is that there isn't any save feature. If you close out, you have to do the gondola stage all over again, and that'll take you a while to complete too. A kid could use up all of their free time for nothing on this game. But once you finish it, you find the crown jewels and surprise surprise, it was the caretaker. He did because he loves the actress and was going to give her the jewels as a gift. Personally, I think if someone gave me the Queen of England stolen jewels as a gift, I'd be at least a little freaked out. So as you can imagine, stealing from the Queen of England is an unspeakably major offense. So the perpetrator is obviously going to face a severe punishment for his- Oh wait, she just forgives him and gives him a lesson on the meaning of love. I guess that works too. So all the characters go to the royal feast and you beat the game. So, what do we think? Uh, it's hard. Yeah, it's really hard. I like the animation, acting, and story, and a lot of the jokes really land. It really does feel like a Scooby-Doo episode. It's really charming to play, but it's hard. Maybe it should have been a teeny bit less difficult. Either way, I'm never getting into a gondola again. I hope everyone has an amazing holiday season, and look forward to many more game discussions. Thank you for joining me, I will see you in the next memory.